everyone and welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you all are going to love this one because we've had a lot of requests to do herbal medicine and uh, a growing guide on herbal medicine. So I uh, decided I would start this kind of uh, part of our growing guide series but on herbal medicines or at least um, some natural remedies that you can grow at home. And one of the ones that we felt were really important to have in our garden was spilanthes, otherwise known as the toothache plant. And so I went out to my local nursery and actually found, believe it or not, some lemon drop, otherwise known as uh, spy, spilanthes or uh, the toothache plant. And so uh, we have obviously a child that is teething and it is super, super uncomfortable to have uh, teeth breaking through and it causes a lot of discomfort in the mouth. And the reason why they call this the toothache plant is because the flowers contain a natural anesthetic that will numb the gums and the teeth and cause um, a, at least some comfort in that, uh, in that localized region. So uh, this is going to be uh, one, of the, one of the ones that we're going to use a ton here in the garden. Cannot wait to grow it. Uh, so I wanted to bring you all along for this growing guide, show you what you need to, to do to grow it. Uh, it's a very easy plant to grow. And uh, one of the things that is very nice about this plant is the fact that it's natural. There are a lot of anesthetics out there. However, many of them are very are riddled with chemicals. And so I prefer the natural route. Um, you know, I, I don't get a whole lot of toothache. Cindy sometimes has a few, um, but uh, you know, as adults, most of our, most of our teeth and, and mouth problems have already been, have already been kind of, either we've had them as a kid because we've eaten too much candy and learned our lesson, uh, <laughs> or you know, we, we've kind of learned to, to keep uh, good oral hygiene uh, throughout the years. So I don't remember the last time I've had a toothache, but I can guarantee you uh, Geneva will be a huge, huge beneficiary of this plant here. So, um, yep, so we're going to go into how to grow it. Let's get started first with planting because uh, I got to get this out of this pot and into the ground. So we'll just talk about soil type. All right, so I'm going to pretty much just plant it right here in my strawberry bed. Reason being is I'm really starting to uh, kind of condense my plants here in my strawberry bed because uh, my, my strawberries have not yet grown out. Um, but one of the things that you need to know about growing spilanthes or the, the toothache plant is that they need very well draining soil. They are very, very, very prone to root rot. So having a good, rich, loose soil is important. As you know, we're growing in pure compost here and having pure compost is great. It's a well-aged compost, breaks down, crumbles, it's very loose, and it's rich in organic matter. So that's going to help the plant grow very well. Um, if you have any amount of, of soil moisture, it needs, to be, uh, it needs to be soil moisture that is kind of held on to humus. If it's anything like a puddle or standing water, your plant will begin to, uh, to show signs of damping off. And one of those signs is that you'll notice uh, that like the, the leaf tips will start to shrink, get smaller, and it will begin to fall over and, and crimp. And that is damping off and that's caused from too much moisture. So that is the soil. Now let's talk about watering, which we, we did kind of just talk about. So we'll start about that now. So Spilanthes does not like a whole lot of water like we just talked about. So the soil type obviously is going to dictate how well you're watered, uh, how your uh, soil will drain when you water. But when you water and how frequently you water very much will dictate its it, the plant health. We will never, ever, ever water this more than once a week. And that's because the, the fact of the matter is, is the plant really does like to dry out. These plants here do grow in arid climates better than very wet climates. And so when you grow this plant, having it the, uh, in a place that's going to dry out will be very crucial. And that's why I have it actually in my strawberry bed because strawberries also are very prone to root rot and they don't like water very much like Spilanthes does. So uh, they're, they're very similar plants. That's why I put them here uh, because I, I do not water this bed all that frequently. So it'll just get rainwater pretty much and it's going to do great. Now let's talk about fertilizing. 
when it comes to fertilizing your spilanthes, you need to remember that you are growing it for the flowers, but you need a plant for it to flower on. And so a lot of times people will just give it a, a, a basic fertilizer, and that is fine. Spilanthes is not very particular. We will be giving this trifecta plus. We'll come back here and just uh, top dress around the base of the plant with about a quarter cup of trifecta, and that's gonna last all season long. It's gonna feed it all season long, and it's going to do great. But just any well-balanced fertilizer will work because you don't want too high of anything. You want it to be very well-balanced because you want to support plant growth, but then you also obviously want the plant to flower. And if you just give it nitrogen, well, it's going to, uh, it's going to promote a lot of leaf growth, but it's not going to flower as much. So just a very all-purpose, well-balanced fertilizer is going to do the trick. Now let's talk about uh, you, the growth habits of this plant. The plant will actually get quite large. You'll notice that it gets about no taller than 12 inch, uh, about 12 inches tall, but it will bush out and really get quite large. So I have it planted here in the middle of these strawberry plants, and it's definitely going to take up all of that space. At full growth, it usually is about 12 inches, uh, or sorry, 12 inches high and about 24 inches in diameter. So it's quite, quite large. And, uh, and it's definitely going to be a nice large plant here. Now, there is some plant care that I think is well worth mentioning. When you first plant your plant, whether you start from seed, you can get seeds. Um, and had we, got, had, we, had we made the decision to grow this earlier, probably would have started from seed because it's a little bit cheaper, but, or it's a lot cheaper actually. But um, starting from starts is totally fine, especially if you just have, if you just need one plant and you can, and you can have access to that plant uh, at a greenhouse, sometimes that's worth it too. Uh, but uh, when you get, if you start from uh, starts or from seed and you, you have your seedling and you're getting ready to transplant it in the garden, you want to remove all flowers. So you can see here, there's a flower coming on right there. We want to remove that flower because that flower is going to take away a lot of energy from the plant. Here's another flower there forming, or a bud, I should say, and a bud there. Um, so we've removed all the buds and that's going to focus energy on growing. This plant is much too small to begin flowering and it's really going to overstress the plant. So I typically wait until the plant is about four inches tall and about four to, maybe four to six inches wide um, in diameter. And that's going to be the, the minimum that I would let it start flowering at. Um, so I'd rather have it get quite large and that reduces the stress on the plant. So now let's talk about temperature, sunlight, and pH, since those are the last three things in our complete growing guide checklist. So the pH, just a pH neutral soil will be great. Compost is a pH of seven, it's a natural pH buffer, so it's going to do wonderful for you. If you do have slightly acidic soil, it certainly won't mind, as long as it's not higher than seven. Alkaline soil is definitely not good for growing spilanthes, so make sure that the soil is at least below a pH of seven, and you're going to do great. Now let's talk about sunlight. So sun exposure is super important because this is growing for its flowers, you need full sun. Anytime you're growing something for its flowers, it means it needs more than five hours of sun. So make sure that this gets real good sun exposure and it's going to do great for you. Um, if you have less than five hours, it's going to struggle and I won't say it's not going to do well, but four hours is really pushing it. So at least five hours of full sun. Um, and if you wanna give it some filtered sun in there too, wonderful, it's going to really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, you're just gonna struggle with four hours or less. I just don't see it really being possible for a flowering plant. Um, but then also, let's talk about temperature. So these are an annual, they're not a perennial, they will die back. But what you can do is you can actually pull this uh, pull this up and bring it indoors. It overwinters indoors very well. Um, you just got to dig it up, make sure you get a lot of the roots and you can bring it, uh, bring it indoors. Um, but in terms of temperatures, you got to do it before the nights dropping down, start dropping down into the 40s. It does not like cold temperatures. It is very much a warm, uh, summer loving plant. So make sure that if you're going to preserve it and you're going to take it indoors, uh, just do it before uh, kind of late summer, I guess you could say. Um, as soon as those nights start dropping down into uh, the mid 40s, 
I pull it out and I'll put it in a pot and take it indoors because um, it just really, really will suffer. You'll notice the first thing when it starts getting cold is the tips of the leaves will start to turn brown, um, like any plant does that does not like the cold. And then what'll happen is it just starts dying back. And, and it's, once it starts dying back, it's almost impossible to save it. So it's better to do it before that stage so that uh, you can save yourself uh, a whole lot of hassle. But that's really it to growing Spilanthes, otherwise known as the uh, well, lemon drop or toothache plant hopefully you all enjoyed and this will be uh, kind of an ongoing series about growing medicinal plants and, and how to grow them in a complete growing guide format uh, i do hope you enjoyed if you do like these complete growing guides we have a huge playlist i'm talking on big big playlist i think it's up to like 35 videos now um, maybe even more and uh, it's loaded with tons of helpful information. So go check it out. Um, I will post a link to it if I can remember uh, to do it in the description box below. If not, you can find it on YouTube. Also, you can find it over on mlgardener.com. Click the media tab and there is a videos that will drop down into a, a separate drop down box that has growing guides there. You can check out the whole playlist there. So as always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you shared it with a friend, liked it as well. That always helps. And Please do remember to grow big or go home. This is Luke from the On My Gardener channel. I'll catch y'all later. See ya.